It's no secret that the impeachment has gotten a lot of coverage recently, so I thought I'd take a moment to focus on the other kind of international traders. That's right, we're doing another trade war episode. Man, it feels like putting back on that warm, well-worn sweater. So what's going on with international trade today? Well, in an episode from early December, I talked about how Trump literally stopped the WTO from functioning. The World Trade Organization's appeals panel will cease to function starting December 11th, when one of its three remaining members plans to step down. Now you might be wondering, hmm, what's breaking down the WTO? Are the people finally listening to those 90s protesters? Not quite. I'll give you a hint as who's behind it. Guess. You'll be right. The crisis at the WTO was created by a US bloc on new appointments to the appellant body, which the Trump administration says has overstepped its mandate and infringes on American sovereignty. Wow, Trump failing to appoint someone to a key position? That's a shocker. So why are we talking about this today? Well, the WTO hasn't been able to rule on a case since December 11th, but countries have continued to rip each other off, so lawsuits continue to come in. So how are we handling these new disputes? Biggest army wins? Not since the opium wars, although I'm sure Pfizer would be fine with a sequel to that one. Instead it was just announced that the European Union and 16 other countries are creating a new temporary WTO. They didn't even invite us. Come on, you even brought in China and both of our neighbors. You know how much we love a good trade war? And as if to add insult to injury, they did it right in front of us. The deal was reached among WTO delegates meeting at the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Now before I get into the meat of this episode, I have to say something I realize is gonna tank my retention rates. This is not as bad as it sounds. This is a temporary deal until the United States appoints a requisite minimum people to the WTO's appellant body, and we can start suing each other without all these legal complications again. This brings us to two questions that I'm going to try to answer today. First, what's the substance of this deal that we're not involved in? And second, why is the United States freezing the World Trade Organization? Alright, so first, what's the temporary WTO look like? Well, we need to understand what exactly is not working right now. And the European Union is warning the WTO's appeals court, which resolves disputes between members, could temporarily collapse this year due to the US opposition to the nomination of judges. The important word there is appeals court. Alright, this is a bit strange, but here's the gist. You can still take a trade dispute to the WTO and have them rule on it. Sounds like not a problem. The problem is, if one of the parties doesn't like the ruling, they can appeal it. And whoop, the appeals court is currently frozen, so we'll just put your trade dispute on ice with the rest of them. As you can imagine, with the WTO the way it currently is, you'd have to be insane to lose an initial case and not appeal it even if you were guaranteed to lose that appeal. It'd be like Disney telling Kevin Feige to stop making three bladder busting stinger scenes for every Avengers movie and his response being, well until you unfreeze Walt's head and have him rule on it himself, yeah I'm gonna stay the course. Sorry urologists and theater janitors. In this case, as of December 11th, there is only one active member remaining, which is less than the three members that are required to sign off on rulings. The practical effect is that while WTO members can still file disputes, the losing party may appeal the WTO's initial ruling into legal limbo, which effectively acts as a veto. So that's going to be a problem, considering how many trade disputes are currently ongoing. Now get me some duct tape and balling wire because we're going to be jerry rigging this system. The goal is to override the court of appeals by expanding on the current WTO rules, specifically article 25 of the dispute settlement understanding. That's right, we're getting specific on this show. It permits nations to agree to a voluntary form of arbitration to settle their disputes. Of course, emphasis here on voluntary. So far these are the countries that have volunteered, 
If a trade dispute comes up between them, the WTO Director General can select a panel of previously vetted former appellant body members who apply the same procedures of the appellant body to reach a final judgment. That's right, in the most boring movie premise out there, soon ex-WTO judges will get the call of duty. We need you to come out of retirement for one last trade appeals case. These decisions will be final and will, in every way, be exactly the same as the appeals court case, except the name. Just think of them as the GoBots to the Court of Appeals Transformers decisions. Boy, am I showing my edge with that deep cut. So, okay, short term solution. Now to the broader question America, why are you doing this? Well, the complaints are interesting, and not the interesting appearances right before your art project makes a one way trip to the dump. Take it away, recent speech Trump made at Davos. Our country hasn't been treated fairly. China's uh, viewed as a developing nation. India is viewed as a developing nation. We're not viewed as a developing nation. As far as I'm concerned, we're a developing nation too. President Donald Trump says it's not fair for China to receive preferential trade benefits as a developing nation at the World Trade Organization. Is that a valid point? Oh my gosh, yes. If you're against this because, well, it's Trump, so it can't be a good idea. Previous US administrations, including that of Trump's predecessor Barack Obama, have bristled at China's demands for special preferences in WTO negotiations. In fact, this isn't even just an America thing. The European Union has also encouraged large developing economies like China to avoid asking for preferential treatment in trade negotiations on a case by case basis. Of course, China responded to this by saying, yeah, we'll take that into consideration, Europe. No, we decided we're not going to shoot ourselves in the foot in the future. Despite all those groups in agreement that this is probably not a great idea, throughout the history of the WTO, the Trump administration is the first to explicitly call for a specific country to forego their development status. China is essentially the 300 pound kid who's been held back five times insisting to be led on the high school football team. So what makes a country a developing country at the WTO? Well, brace yourself for this one, conservatives, but any country that self-identifies as a developing country is a developing country. If you think that's in any way an exaggeration, Bloomberg reports, any nation can declare itself to be a developing country upon joining the WTO. Almost two-thirds of the WTO's 164 members have done so. The WTO doesn't have an official policy or definition guiding what constitutes developing. With that in mind, let me replay that 11 second clip from earlier. China is uh, viewed as a developing nation. India is viewed as a developing nation. We're not viewed as a developing nation. As far as I'm concerned, we're a developing nation too. Yeah, this one could get odd fast. But by all indications, America has not yet attempted to be reclassified as a developing country. I'd give it a month though. Trump's push against country self-classification as developing has led to some tangible results though. Several countries including Brazil, Taiwan, Singapore, and South Korea have agreed to relinquish their developing country rights in future trade negotiations as a result of this Trump push. Unfortunately for the WTO and Trump, China is not a part of that list. And this brings us to today's fight, because China is continuing to identify as self-developing, and America is saying, China, you no longer have the right to do that at the WTO. China has grown into the second largest economy in the world, produces some of the world's fastest supercomputers, and even landed a rover on the dark side of the moon. Have some confidence, guys! Of course, on the other side, enter Chinese ambassador to the WTO, Zhang Xiangchen, who in response argues, our country is facing various challenges, difficulties, and gaps in achieving a balanced and adequate development, so we will not make commitments beyond our capabilities, nor will we give up our legitimate and institutional rights as a developing member. Basically, sure, we've got our developed areas, but there are large gaps between our largest cities and our countryside. I mean, for a communist country, we have an impressively large wealth gap. 
Someone should really reskin that little red book. So that's exactly what the WTO fight is looking like right now. The appeals court has continued to be shut down, but a scab appeals court has emerged to handle disputes between volunteer members. And the official appeals court will not officially be reopened until the United States gives it the OK symbol. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank my patrons here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing group of exceptional individuals by clicking on the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.